Hey. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the session. I am Pramod Rana and today I am going to talk about how to have visibility and uh, security of CI CD ecosystem. I hope you guys are having a good time at the conference. Um, this is the agenda uh, for today's. Uh, first, I'm going to set the context that why I'm having this, uh, this talk. Uh, second part of that is what is the attack surface around the problem uh, I'm trying to solve here. And then how we can systematically approach that problem in order to, in order to figure it out. Uh, what's the methodology we can uh, practically follow within our organization. And then I'm going to introduce uh, CI-CD Guard, which is a open source uh, project uh, trying to solve the problem. Uh, what's this architecture? What are the different components which makes that solution? What's the workflow? And then we are going to have a demo. And uh, then I'm going to close the session with the, with the future roadmap for the solution. Um, a bit about me, I am working as an application security manager with Netscope and uh, we say that security that's ready for everything. We are adamant to secure all the data no matter at, no matter how, what. I, my team is primarily responsible for two domains. The one is the security testing and then having the security integration uh, within the CI CD pipeline. I'm also author of uh, three open source projects, uh, which I have presented in Black Hat, DEF CON, NULL CON in, in different years. I'm also uh, OS Pune chapter lead and a proud OSAP. So uh, let me start with the oversimplified version of the CI CDO ecosystem. So in a, uh, for any software in the world, uh, we have a code base, which is uh, stored centrally somewhere. And then we have a solution which converts that code base into a deployable entity, uh, which is again stored uh, in a central location on an organization level. And then we have a, a solution which uh, deploys that entity into the different uh, functional environment. Now, as per the organization nomenclature, that environment can be anything. It can be staging, pre-production, production, QA, or whatever you want to call it in an organization. Um, as with uh, as a as a as a uh, DevSecOps advocate, I'd highly recommend everyone to have these you know security integration within each phases of the development lifecycle uh, to make sure that we are delivering a secure and robust software to our end users, and that is uh, security in CI/CD as we all know it. A very interesting topic, but uh, that's not what I'm talking about today. Today. I'm going to talk about the building blocks of a CI CD ecosystem and how we can approach uh, the security of those. In, in, in today's time, we have number of uh, tools and technologies which makes a CI CD uh, ecosystem across industry. And uh, most of the time, those technology falls into more than one category. For example, GitHub as an organization started as a SCA, but eventually now with the expansion of the action, they are both into continuous integration and continuous deployment at the same time. And as with any ecosystem in the nature, even if we have the compromise of the smallest piece of that, it's going to impact the entire space one way or other. And that is absolutely true with the CI CD as well. So we could have a very trivial vulnerability uh, into one of the component, let's say Jenkins default credentials. But if that Jenkins server is responsible for building a, a building a business sensitive binary, which sits on the client location, that small vulnerability is going to have the impact on the on the business uh, overall. Part of the uh, problem solving the uh, CI CD ecosystem is the is the lack of visibility as with uh, you know different domains in the security. Uh, for example, in best case scenario, I might be able to tell you that we have five uh, let's say Jenkins server in our in our organization, but it's practically impossible to tell me that how many jobs are actually running on those on those Jenkins server, let alone what those jobs are doing at any point at any given point of time. Another example could be, um, are we in a position to tell that how many third party GitHub actions my organization is using? And even if we have the count of those, can we tell that what kind of versions and what kind of uh, feature we are utilizing by those uh, by those external GitHub actions? So all of this falls into uh, on a concept level with the asset management of our uh, of our CI/CD platforms, 
and uh, another aspect of of the challenge is to have the interconnection uh, between the different technologies for example eventually end of the day we are deli- uh, we are delivering a software a single piece of working unit and anything we do within our entire ci cd process is 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 with a single end point so all of the points are eventually related and uh, for example we might have a, a vulnerability on a certain code within a certain repo but if that repository is used by another jenkins build which is again further pushed uh, as an artifact to a let's say jfrog artifactory or something then what is happening is that there is a connection between github repository or any scm to a build process jenkins bamboo and then having a uh, to the artifact server so that interrelation is very difficult uh, in in on an organization level if we have multiple tools around those multiple technologies you know making that overall process then it becomes uh, difficult with over the period of time to find the relation and all let's uh, i have already given few examples around that let's uh, try uh, to 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 summarize it in a easy way here in example in this example also the like i said the vulnerability is very trivial but again depending on the depending on the functionality and the role of that jenkins server it's it it uh, can have impact on the business level the same goes for uh, let's say we are using a malicious or vulnerable third party action running in self hosted runners i remember yesterday only there was a talk about that uh, where the uh, where the third party will, uh, actions can have uh, impact on organization uh, crypto mining or or any other used way and all of that in a way relates to the visibility part of the of the problem where we are trying to identify that what and how we are using it another example could be uh, let's say we have uh, users uh, we have a single user provisioning system and then each of the user is uh, is provisioned in a same way in a different technologies for example if it gets compromised on on one technology then how it can impact the other parts as well so i am i am putting the name to the technology here but uh, it it applies on a more holistic way for example i am saying it huh, but it could be any other technology that's what i have put it, it intentionally because that's kind of well known in in our industry um another aspect could be uh, for example as a security practitioner we all aware that we should have a, a multi factor authentication on any kind of enterprise level software we have if we do not have that uh, feature enabled that is the process part of it the other part of it is that how do we make sure that it's it's keep it, the setting be there all the time the governance part of the problem and if that doesn't happen then uh, with an uh, with a different kind of attack uh, that can have impact on the on the organization so how do we how do we approach uh, that problem i think there are three parts to it when we say the methodology the first is uh, making the software uh, secure uh, you know inherently by default when i say software here i am using it in a very generic term it could be as small as a library doing a very very specific job uh, to the point it's an enterprise level sasi product which is getting used by single every single employee of the organization for example workday um making the software secure uh, by default in a way lies with the uh, the responsibility lies with the software provider whoever is developing software it's a common understanding that that organization is responsible for that that is eventually security in ci cd uh, domain but what i would like to propose is that it's too much of a task for any single organization to ask to make the software secure all the time especially in current times so i think there are two parts to it the one is the provider and the other part is the end user as a end user also we are in a way responsible to to make sure that whatever we are using have a certain security vetted process and on an organization level it makes more sense so what uh, what we have done within our organization is that whenever we are onboarding a, a third party component like i said it could be anything a single library to an enterprise level software we make sure that it goes through a certain uh, security vetting process where we understand that how the how the secure security posture of that particular product looks like second part of that thing is when we identify something i think it's a 
it's our obligation more or less to to work with the with the software provider to fix that vulnerability as if it's our own uh, product soft uh, product vulnerability so that is the first aspect of the overall uh, methodology that we work uh, towards making the software secure holistically as a, as a community where everyone the provider and the end user both are uh, both are responsible for securing the product the second uh, aspect of methodology is that the implementation part so a product can be best secure inherently but if we are not configuring it well eventually it's going to fall apart for example uh, uh, jenkins might have the best versions available but if we leave anonymous access it doesn't make sense so i think the second part is how well we are con- uh, implementing it within our organization and that will vary as per the organization it it's the it's a diverse problem to handle for example it could be as simple as defo- uh, disabling the default settings um using the mfa or up to date plugins apps actions i think uh, most enterprise level software has uh, plugins uh, plugins in a way to extend the functionality of the software and uh those are kind of uh notorious things to have in the environment because as we expand on the functionality it becomes a challenge with the security the more flexibility we give to the software and we expand it to the community uh, we expand on the functionality but at the same time it becomes challenging for the security part so i think uh once we have that aspect we keep it up to date it's a nightmare to keep up to date all the plugins within the organization but i think we can uh, approach on 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 that part the third aspect of that is monitoring part uh, like i said uh, before the governance part we let's say we have a we have a policy which says that everything which comes to our organization has to be security vetted and in the process we identified something which we need to fix which we did from the second point technical aspect but how do we make sure that that setting or that configuration sustains over the period of time we might say that we need to enable the uh, mfa on the github for all the users but any admin user can change it or or can we make it this way that nobody can change it at at with any permission so monitoring part uh, becomes very important over the period of time because as a, as a as a security professional we we all could agree that no matter how much we try eventually something bad will happen in that case how we can respond effectively if if something happens so that is the uh, methodology on high level first making the secure software inherently by default uh, with the contribution of everyone provider and the end user uh, second part is implementing it well uh, not doing any misconfiguration and the second part is continuously monitoring and uh, be an effective in responding whenever something happens so that's where uh, CI CD guard uh, comes into the picture uh, it's an open source project which i'll be releasing after this talk um it does um, on a functional level it operates in three aspect first is it represents each component of the technology into into the graph format and what i mean by that it is goes to the granular level the most granular level possible for each technology and tries to break down the technology in terms of graph and then we have a relationship between those nodes which represents that how the configuration is done for that particular technology for example um, uh, let's pick the example of github action in github action as we all know we have workflows and then we have jobs then we have steps then we have another action then we have runners so all of those are node type in ci cd and how those are configured within the environment will represents the relationship between those nodes so that is the first aspect uh, trying to solve the problem of the visibility part second it identifies the security misconfiguration in the implementation as per the industry uh, best practices whatever uh, as per i have been able to done uh, through my research so all of these data uh, when i say knowledge base of the vulnerability will be available in the github uh, once i publish it so it tries to identify the security misconfiguration in the implementation and the third aspect is uh, which is i think the most important in 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 context of ci cd guide it 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 tries to identify the relationship between the different technologies the example i mentioned that a particular repository triggering a 
uh, Jenkins job, then what it will do is it will read the build. It will try to identify which uh, repository triggered it and then make a relationship on the graph theory level. So there will be a uh, edge connecting both of those nodes so that we know that these are the inter technology relationship between them and that applies to inter technology relationship as well. Now let's consider a scenario uh, on an organization level. We, we developed a policy that uh, whenever we are using a third party action, uh, we are going to analyze it and on the basis of our security analysis, we are going to pinpoint to a certain version that this is the version which is certified by security. Now let's consider that that particular third party action is used by 10 teams and each team is in a way using a different uh, version. So what CICD guard is going to do is it going to try it's it's going to build the nodes for each version so that from a governance side you know that um, we as a security team certified this particular version whether the organization all the teams within the organization is using that version or not. So you can pinpoint on that version and identify all the nodes which are not using that version. So that's uh, that's the relationship part uh, comes into the picture. So example of that, like I mentioned, Jenkins jobs getting triggered by the repository. Are we using weighted version of external GitHub action? Uh, do we have common users between Jenkins, JFrog, so and so forth? Uh, technology could be different. So these are the three aspects uh, representing everything in graph, breaking it down to the lowest level possible to for the each technology try to identify the security misconfiguration for those nodes and then identify the relationship across the technologies. Now the relationship could be like in, 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 in case of GitHub, I could have an enterprise uh, organization level node that organization level node have with multiple repositories all connected. And then the each nodes will have, let's say group of users who is assigned to the repository. So uh, using the graph theory, it enables uh, it enabled uh, this tool to have that relationship in a relatively easier uh, way to visualize and impact. Like I said, this is the node database schema. Um, like I said, it it breaks down to the lowest level possible. And uh, for example, it in in the uh, let's say if I make an action node which is used by another workflow, then eventually it will have a circular relationship with that node so that we are aware that this uh, action is getting used by another action in one way or other as well. This is uh, what the architecture or the different components of the of the solution looks like. Uh, before we go forward, any question for me? Let me catch my watch. No? Yeah, please. Um, what do you mean by uh, where to ask you mean in terms of technology? Login or whatever they try to... No, so uh, in case of uh, multi-factor, that will be on the user account level. Whenever you do something, whenever you... Uh, on the lowest level, whenever you make an API call to any service, you need to have MFA. I know it will vary as per the technologies. For example, if you need to make an API call programmatically, like I'm doing in this code, uh, I need to have access token associated with that. In that case, the, the security policies will vary. For example, for the access token, you could say that the, it has to be rotated uh, within a certain period of time because we cannot have MFA there. So it will vary how how we are utilizing the technology in order to make the communication between that. Okay, uh, moving forward. Um, there are four uh, broad components to this solution. The first is the scan engine on the left hand side. Um, I have uh, kept scan engine in a way that it can be used on isolated manner as well. And what I mean by that is that uh, there are at this point of time, there are four scanners are uh, doing different jobs, GitHub, Jenkins, Jen uh, GitHub Action, Jenkins and JFrog. And each scanner can be used individually. You do not need to, there is no dependency between all of these tools. Eventually, if you use all the scanners, it will help to build the 
analysis or the relationship but if you want to use it for a very specific technology uh, it allows to do that uh, function as well the second component is the analysis like i said if you start using more and more it uh, the analysis engine will be able to fetch the data and make the relationship between the different technologies now that relationship could be anything it could be between um, n technologies to m technologies um from the output perspective in order to make the relationship it has to be stored in neo4j data uh, which is a graph based database i am using but if you want to use those uh, scanners individually then uh, you can you know have the output in the json format which is again machine readable you can redirect that output into a third party uh, solution for example elastic search so uh, there are two ways like i said there are two ways to use it use it individually parse the data into json and then send it to somewhere else where you would like to have the analysis second is get you use all of that put into the neo4j and build the relationship and you can use in a both ways as well at the same time uh there is a, a very simplistic web ui uh, at this point of time which helps us to 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 talk to the uh, database and make some basic filtering around the ui part uh from the input perspective there are two ways you can provide the input to the to the scripts one is the environment variables and the uh, you can do the same via the command line as well environment was specifically if you want to have the integration with the other solutions so that you can pass it there and then run it uh not stored or getting passed into the command line sensitive information because most of the scanner will require your authentication detail in order to work effectively not most i think all uh demo i intentionally recorded this demo for specific reason that i needed to redact the data uh what i am going to present here because uh, i did not want to show it uh, i cannot show it in 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 a live in a conference which is get recorded obviously i can run it it with my personal github account but then the data will be too minimal to to make any sense up out of it um as you can see uh, those independent scripts are the four scanners which can be run uh, first i'm going to run the github action scanner and the primary reason of making two scanners for github and github action is because logically those both are serving different purposes so rather than serving on uh, rather than segregating on the technology basis i segregated on the basis of the role uh, functionality and uh, both uh, scanners will have different uh, input as as per the role of that uh, particular technology for the demo purposes i am using um, i am using uh, environment variable as an input uh, for example for the github action you have to provide the organization and the repository name uh, which particular repository you want to be get analyzed with the with the action and uh, whenever you see data in the square brackets in the output it basically represents the correct data i just have redacted so if you will run it in a real life you will see the actual organization name uh, which is getting uh, which is getting created so whenever a scan uh, gets started it it start creates the node uh, and and then display the information that what kind of node is getting created and then uh, when there is a vulnerability identified uh, specific to any node that information gets appended into the uh, into the database so th this is the json format i was telling you which uh, getting displayed in the command line you can easily redirect to a file or something and then store it second uh, and it's pretty fast for for uh, given the access and all uh, second uh, i am uh, i'm going to run is the jenkins one which is concept is same you provide the authentication detail on the basis of technology is going to identify it's going to create the nodes uh, depending on what technology you are providing um sometime it takes time depending on the how many api network call we are making uh we created different nodes is it visible in the back okay thanks and then once it gets into like let's example uh to the jenkins technology it's going to process all the jobs and then within job it's going to process all the builds so the node structure will look something like this jenkins servers associated jobs associated builds with each job 
so the the graph will look something like this uh, server to connected to job and then job is connected to build and then build eventually connected to the node which is responsible for running that build and then in the so what's going to happen with the graph is that if a single node is running let's say 10 builds eventually that single node will be connected to the 10 different build nodes so that you know that this this uh the node in context of Jenkins is running too many builds at, at any given point of time. Now the second thing it processed the user list. Again, Jenkins server will be connected to the group node and then group node will be connected to the user node so that you know that within each group, within each group how many users you have and how many users are there in different groups because every relationship, every edge is circularly connected as well. Yes, so what I do is um, every node uh, obviously has some metadata and when you go to the UI, you can select that node and when you select any node, information will be displayed. And depending on the, the metadata of that node, you can make a selection whether it was a last build or not. When it comes to the data associated with the node, there are two type of information. One, uh, one which I'm able to fetch it from the, from the tool directly. Second, which I'm assigning uh, through the code. So all of those information makes the metadata of any particular node. Since it's processing a lot of users, uh, that's the reason it's taking time uh, to execute the process. Now again, the output is in JSON and a different way. As you can see in the code, it processed all the plugins of the of the of the uh, Jenkins server. So how it's going to uh, so what the use case practically here is, for example, like I said, you have three Jenkins servers. In three Jenkins servers, uh, you have let's say ten plugins. Now what is going to happen is that for each plugin time, it's going to create one node and each plugin will be, will have an edge to the server with which it is installed so that you know that in my organization, I'm using plugin A, which is used by Jenkins ABC and A has version one, B has version one, but C has version two. So that kind of information, it will help you to identify uh, when you do, when you convert it into the graph. Now, this is what the UI looks like. Uh, like I said, it's a very minimalistic uh, UI at this point of time, which broadly has three section. Uh, one is where the graph is displayed actually, and graph can be can quite messy if you have if you scan let's say 10 technologies at the point of time because I'm breaking down it to the lowest level possible so that's why I have the second section the filter one where you make the filter on the basis of the technology you or basis of the node you want to see and and analyze at any given point of time and then then obviously there are some node details information colors which each color represents and all so this is the filter you can use uh, to to identify that which node you want to see at any given point of time. Um, for now, the the filter is on the basis of the type of the node. Uh, currently, I'm working on a feature where there is a search where you can where you can identify the node on the basis of more metadata. For example, it could be something like type equals to repository and name equals to ABC, or it could be user equals to username equals to abc and technology equals to jenkins so something like that so i'm working on that uh, search feature which will help us to figure out the point in interest uh, node at any given point of time so for example if you make a filter uh, it's going to select all the plugins uh, search is or at this point of time or condition if you select two technologies going to display a or b both nodes uh, red color represents obviously the vulnerable uh, node impacted by the code. Like I said, it's our condition. It's showing both the nodes. Now it's showing the builds only. If you not select anything, it will show everything. 
interesting thing I want to show you here is the connection part. Like I said, the interconnection between the different technologies. If you look at the bottom uh, graph, there is a black node connected to, I, I don't know what to call it, bluish color node. This node is GitHub repository node and this node is Jenkins build node. So what is happening here is that it identified the relationship between a repository and the Jenkins build. Now same will apply as we will keep uh, growing in terms of in terms of the you know expansion of the target technologies. The more technologies we scan, the better uh, relationship will be able to be uh, between them. So if you have used only GitHub, then obviously it will not find a relationship with other. But if you used GitHub and Jenkins, then it's going to find the relationship between them. If you used GitHub, Jenkins and JFrog, then it's going to find the relation between JFrog and GitHub, so and so forth. That combination will be there always. So like I said, the scan engine is independent of the, of the analysis, but eventually relies on the data which the scan engine is providing. If you, uh, if you recall the architecture part. So same, uh, there are two, there were two distinct relationship which it was able to identify. So that was the uh, demo before I, I go into the future red map. Any, any question? Okay. 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 Sure. Uh, the question is that uh, CI/CD at this point of time is in a way in point solution. How do we make sure that it is continuously getting scanned and then obviously getting alerted uh, whenever there is a something? Um, right now uh, we have scripts which can do the scan at any given point of time. One way of doing it is that we use that script in another another uh, tool which allows us to run that script continuously. For example, we'll, we can build a continuous job in, in Jenkins or Action which can run that script and then, then rely on that technology to make the alert and everything for us. If we want to have that feature enabled with the CI CD guard as well, then what I need, I will need to do is that expand on the, uh, expand on the configuration part more. So what I, uh, I can do is that I can provide a feature which enables us to do this continuous scanning. But I think uh, that's not uh, what would be, I'll say, uh, there's no point of, uh, in my opinion, there's no point of reinventing the wheel. So what I'm trying to focus right now is, is build on the, uh, to expand on the technology part uh, as a going forward, expand on the technology part and rely on existing uh, tools which are already there, there, which can do the job of the, you know, continuous uh, scanning or continuous alerting. For example, it would be very uh, straightforward process to configure a job in the Jenkins to run this script and do the alerting part. So that's how I'm, I'm seeing it. That expansion on the technology part more, the relationship part more, uh, then expanding on a, on a, on a thing which in my opinion, the tools can already do. Make sense? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. So um, uh, the question is that uh, 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 we do not change, you know, let's say job manually going to the platform and do it. It's all or orchestrated through the through the code. Correct. So uh, what we can do in that scenario is that we 
integrate the independent scripts into the into the existing process itself and i think that's what my point was also like we already have a process to build the software in one way or other i mean you said infrastructure as a code as an example like not changing a job but if we if we uh, so i think if we focus on making the security tools as light as possible and fit it into the process so if i tell a devops engineer that i have a separate tool which you need to integrate into your environment and which will alert me if something bad happens uh, you know by doing any changes and all other approach i think is that i tell them that this is a small piece of thing which you need to put it into your progress and if something happens it will do the job for me automatically so what can we do is that since you are uh, managing all your configuration in terms of code and when there is a code there must be a process to identify the change for example pull request in case of github i just tell them when if there is a pull request you are supposed to run this script as well how we do it technically github actions again if the tool is in if the code base is in github then we utilize the github action and then with the each pr we build a action which will run this script and do the trigger for us so i i i i am intentionally keeping the ui part as light as possible and make it you know more modular so that it can be used in a different combination and that was the primary reason of making scan engine isolated that it does not rely on anything each script are independent scripts on own and if you run it collectively it will give you a different data uh, insight in order to analyze yeah please um good question if um, i'll give you my ex organization example so uh, like we do development in a in a crazy speed and it's practically impossible like i said to introduce a new process uh, from the security side and then keep up with that it's it's not going to happen and i think it's true for most organization in today's time i expect it to be part of the devops process and uh, uh, it will again come to the modular part of the solution so if we have a solution which is modular enough to fit into the requirement of each organization like i mentioned few few uh, few technology which it is supporting at this point of time but none of the organization is you is going to use the same set of technology every organization will have their own way of doing it so if we segregate it on individual level and the input will be diverse and somehow we make the process so that it redirects to a single output source so two use cases to use it the first is that you use individual things integrated within the devops process and parse the data as you like it as per your organization requirement second is you again use it on a individual level and then push all the data into a single database which would be neo4j in this case but short answer i expect it to be integrated within devops rather than having a security thing did i answer thanks any other question okay um for the uh, for the road map part uh, um expansion obviously target technologies the more i expanded the more it will be able to you know be more effective in terms of data and everything uh, these are the few i have in pipeline but uh, it will depend on the environment and all it's it's little difficult to get the testing environment and everything and then the then the tool has to be api supported and all because technically everything is api communicated for uh, for ci cd guard um second part which i think uh, i i personally i'm very much interested is the analysis part expansion on that process more and more data associated with each node so that the relationship can be more uh, you know more uh, impactful for example what is the difference between what is the correlation between different repositories um uh, one example could be in case of a, a microservice based architecture of the platform that one service can be built by multiple repositories or 
one repository can contribute to multiple microservices. So can we convert that data into graph so that it helps us to build that relationship? And for that, we will need to process more and more metadata of the of the GitHub provided by GitHub or, uh, you know, built by our own uh, algorithm. And uh, it, it could be something like this uh, on, a, on a theory level that five repositories is building a microservice A, which is getting pushed to artifactory B, which is getting deployed into production environment and pre-prod. So there is a relationship starting from the repository and then we trace it back to the user level as well that user A, B, C contributed to repos A, B, C, D and then all of this contribution got converted into a microservices which was again stored into, as a binary into different environment. So if we, if we are able to process data deep enough then uh, we will be able to contribute that what changes of the code ended up into, into your customer environment. Um, the third part of that is the, obviously the visualization search is I think the most practical and the usable thing would be rather than making fancy graph around it. I think the more uh, search feature we have within our organization, it will be because I, I just scanned, I think, um, five repos, uh, two Jenkins servers and one JFrog artifactory and the data was that messy. So if we, if we do it on an organization level, it's going to be messy at a single, to look at it in a single view. So I think that's where the search feature uh, will, will be more uh, practical to use. Yeah, so that's all I had uh, from my side. Uh, if you have any question, we can talk about that. Thank you very much. Yeah. If you have any question after the session, as always, <laughs> you can reach out to me via this uh, mediums. I'm more than happy to discussion uh, discuss about it. So we did a lot of questions throughout the talk, but um, just open up for a general Q and A. If anyone else has any remainder questions, we have five minutes for that now. The code will code I will be releasing after this talk, uh, maybe today or once I back home. Uh, it will be available to this URL. Any questions? Oh, thanks again. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. You have been wonderful audience.